Hello and welcome to Ott and Math. In this edition of Ott and Math, we're going to talk about CPCTC and circles. All right, CPCTC, another um, another portion of geometry which we'll use quite frequently. An acronym that stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, what does that mean? That means that if I have two triangles that I've shown congruent by, let's say, the SSS postulate or the ASA postulate or the SAS postulate, then I can also say that the other parts of the triangle that I haven't yet proven congruent are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So what does that mean in plain English? Well, I'm given that AB and DE are congruent. I'm given that angle E I'm sorry, angle A and angle D are congruent. And I'm given that angle B and angle E are congruent. So I have A congruent to D, A congruent to D. I've got DE congruent to AB, and I have angle B congruent to AE. So I know that I have two congruent figures, ABC and DEF. Now, in order to say that EF is congruent to BC, EF and BC are congruent, I need to say first that the two triangles are congruent, which I've done by angle side angle. And then I'm going to say corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So BC is congruent to EF. And that's how that works. So first you prove the two triangles congruent, and then you prove that the corresponding parts of the triangles are also congruent. All right, another part of the discussion is going to be on circles. Now, we're, we're making a little bit of a detour here because we want to combine the two um, sets of information corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent and uh, some information on triangles to set up a problem for you uh, or a practice problem, we'll put it that way. Okay, so what's a circle? Circle is a set of all points in two dimensions, in two dimensional space that are equidistant from a fixed point, which is called the center. So in this case, we write a circle in shorthand as circle with a little dot in the middle, and then the point, which is the center uh, of the circle, D. So circle with a circle and a point, and then D. So this is circle D. And I know that if I draw lines from the center of the circle to any point on the circle, that those lines are all going to be the same length. And we call uh, the lines from, or the segments from the center of the circle to the circle itself as the radii. Or singular would be radius. But all four of these segments, the green, black, blue, and red, we call radii. And we say that all radii of a triangle are congruent by definition, really, because the circle is a set of all points that are equidistant from the center. Uh, so again, ther theorem number 19, all radii of a circle are congruent. And then a couple other things you want to know about the circle is that the area of a circle is pi times the radius, which would, in this case would be 3, but could be some other value, squared. And the circumference, which is the distance around the entire circle, is 2 times pi times the radius. So let's use this information about CPCTC and circles in a proof. Okay, so we're asked, or actually we're given that we have a circle P here, and we're asked to prove that AB is going to be congruent, so AB is congruent to CD. So AB here, we want to prove AB is congruent to CD. So now let's mark up the diagram with what we know. Well, we know all radii of a circle are congruent. So I've got CP, PD, AP, and PB are congruent. And then I remember learning in another chapter that vertical angles are congruent. So CPD and APB are going to be congruent. Well, as it so turns out, I have two triangles, CPD and APD, that are going to be congruent by side angle side. And then I could say that CD is going to be congruent to AB by CPCTC. So you see how as the part of the process of uh, creating the two column proof, I've drawn the diagram, I've taken what's given, I've marked up the diagram based on what's given, and then I've come to a conclusion first before I start my proof. Okay, so now I know 
how I'm going to tr uh, prove the two triangles congruent, how I'm going to prove the two segments congruent. I can move on to writing the two column proof because I already know exactly what I want to say. Okay, so uh, statement number one, circle P. It's given that this is a circle with the center P. So I write given is the reason. And I say segment PA, PB, PC, uh, and PD are all going to be congruent. And I know that because all radii of a circle are congruent. That was theorem 19, which we just learned. Number three, angle CPD and angle APB are congruent. And I recall that from the last chapter that uh, vertical angles are congruent. So there is my angle, angle CPD and APB congruent. Now I can say that triangle CPD and triangle APD are congruent by side, angle, side. I have a side, an angle, and a side, a side, an angle, and a side. So I know that by side, angle, side postulate, they're all congruent. So now I can say that AB, segment AB is congruent to segment CD because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I have the two triangles that are congruent. I've shown that by proving side, angle, side congruency between the two triangles. Now I can say that another part of the triangle, of the two triangles, another correspond, set of corresponding parts are going to be congruent because once I've proven the two tri triangles congruent, corresponding parts of those congruent triangles are going to be congruent.